Hello everybody, welcome to Noble Weapons 4th tutorial in the Quick and Simple tutorial series. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to learn about parallaxing. And uh, parallaxing is a technique for faking perspective while we're using an orthographic projection. In essence, it means two things. First, elements that are further away move slower with respect to the camera. You might have noticed this while you're watching a landscape and you'll see that the mountains appear static with respect to, to the elements in the road. And second, elements that are farther away are darker in general. We'll see how to fake this phenomenon through a simple trick. Okay, so I prepare a small scene. The fish moving to the right and the camera following the fish. Okay, as you can see there's no parallaxing and that's the effect we're going to add. Uh, you can see the code for a little moment. This is the fish's code. There's a public vector 3 called speed. This vector is set over here. And there's also the moving camera which finds the fish object, gets its uh, script, and then applies the same speed that the fish is moving at to the camera. So if for instance I were to move this 10 units per second, the camera uh, would follow. Now if you think for a moment, what we would expect while the fish moves to the right is uh, these columns to move to the left, and the ship to move to the left but at a slower rate, and the background to be pretty much static. So in essence, what the ship and the background would have to do is advance at a tiny rate to the right to fake the effect. One simple thing we can do is grab all the objects and group them into layers. For example, the columns and the animal would go into one layer, the ship would go into no another one, and the background would go into a third one. Let's go ahead and create these layers. I'm going to add a new script, and we're going to call this layer. Okay, and let's say that the layer advances at a tiny fraction of the fish's speed to the right. So let's do the same thing that we did before. Go ahead and do a 20% times time dot delta time. And this would advance to the right, therefore giving the illusion of parallaxing. Now the next thing that would be good to have is some sort of parameter to control the parallax factor in function of the distance so as to make it slower the farther away it is. We're going to modify the parallax layer class so we're going to add public float distance this is the distance we're going to set manually for each layer constant which is the maximum distance that we consider if objects are at this specific distance they're going to appear far away a parallax factor this is the one we're going to calculate inside so Parallax factor equals the distance we specify divided by the maximum distance. And we're going to clamp this value if the parallax factor is bigger than 1. We clamp it to 1. The factor is bigger the farther away we are. That means we're going to add more speed to the right to objects that are far away. Finally, we modify this and instead of a 20%, we'll go ahead and put the parallax factor here. And let's try this out. Um, I've set layer 2 to be at 70 and layer 1 to be at 40. Let's hit play and see if all of this works. As you can see, this goes just a little bit slower and this one goes like really slow giving the effect of parallaxing. Now this can be improved upon. What if I wanted to move the camera around in the viewport? Also, depending on where the camera is when the game starts, that affects the parallaxing effect. You can see how this is different. Now we can fix this by doing two things. A. Setting a reference coordinate for the camera, which means where the camera is, and the objects are properly aligned. And two, displacing every element with respect to that position, the difference between the camera's position and the reference coordinate, multiplied by the parallax factor. That's going to give us the correct positioning for the elements in the background. Now there's another thing we want to be able to do, which is move the camera around and make the objects update in real time in the editor. We'll learn how to do that too. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and edit the camera script. Let's add a public vector 3 reference position, which is the uh, reference I mentioned before. And we need to set this uh, in the editor. So let's go ahead and look at where the camera is located. Um, I'll put minus 14 here just for simplicity. Um, 
we'll put minus 14 here too. Now we'll edit the uh, layer, the parallax layer. We need to create two attributes. First, a vector 3, which is the reference position um, taken from the camera. So that would be camera reference position. And then we also need um, a, the transform for the camera, right? Because we need to access the current position of the camera. So we'll cache that over there. Um, and in the start function, we need to retrieve them. So the uh, camera, the reference position is going to be equal to the uh, camera dot main. We get the the script component, um, which is moving camera, and we'll get the reference uh, variable, and we'll also uh, grab the camera transform just by camera dot main dot transform. Right. The next thing we'll do is in the update loop, we need to um, grab the distance from the camera to the reference position and multiplying that by the parallax factor uh, should give us the um, appropriate distance. And then the next thing we need to do is um, assign that to the position of the current layer. So that will be transform dot position equals to um, this new variable we've created. Be careful though, because right now the camera has a z-coordinate that does not correspond to the z-coordinate of the layer. So what we have to do is in camera displacement, modify the z, and that's where the uh, distance parameter we created before. Now the last thing we want to do, which is make this update dynamically in the editor, is uh, at the beginning of the class, add a small attribute which is called execute in edit mode and this will make sure that when you're in edit mode inside the editor everything that's inside these functions gets updated. Um, so let's go back to the unity. This should update when I move the camera. Okay. Um, we need to adjust something else because uh, the relative position of the ship with respect to the layer as you can see um, is a bit shifted. That's because of the original positioning. Let's go ahead and click transform reset position. And let's do the same thing um, with the background, right? So now you can see uh, the camera has a far plane of 100, but because this was being displaced um, really far back, it, it wasn't seen by the camera. There's one very last thing I want to do, and that is add a tint to every layer. Um, so what we're going to do is edit the uh, parallax layer. Um, we're going to add here a uh, really quick a public color um, tint. And what we're going to do here is iterate over all the objects in the layer and uh, tint them all in this uh, specific color to add a little bit of depth. So what we're going to do is create a private tk2d sprite array and I'm going to call this layer objects and we retrieve it inside which is equal to get components in children of type um, tk2d sprite which is going to get all the sprites that are inside um, this, uh, this specific layer. And then we iterate over all the objects. So for in Now let's go ahead and test this. So we go to Unity. Let's say we give this a um, layer one, a blue color, something like this. Um, we don't want it too dark either, something like, yeah, like this maybe. And then layer two, we'll give it a uh, bit of a darker color. So that means that it's a bit farther away. Okay, maybe something like this, yeah. And so if we hit play, we can preview um, the parallaxing with the uh, the tinted backgrounds, right? Okay. Of course, you can do a lot of tweaking to this to make it look cool. And, you know, there's lots of other things you can add to it. 
All right, I hope you liked it a lot and learned a lot from it and uh, obviously had a lot of fun. See you guys next time.